What's up everybody, uh, Derek Ting here. So um, right now I've been exporting audio files for the sound team um, in DaVinci Resolve 16. And uh, it's been a bit of a process. I've had to do a lot of troubleshooting. Uh, normally I would hand this off to an editor, but it's been actually really difficult to find a DaVinci Resolve editor. Um, a lot of, a lot of, well, most people are using Premiere still. Uh, but I really believe that DaVinci is a much more convenient way to edit uh, 4K and it's just getting better and better as a, a editing suite. And of course, I, I kind of, um, you know, switched over to this editing um, platform. So uh, I kind of really just stuck that, you know, I can't just um, take the whole movie and, and move it to another platform that easily. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so because it's been a process, um, you know, I want to document how uh, I was able to um, export the AAFs so that um, Ben and Jed, uh, my friends, um, can uh, really handle the sound um, in the best way and bring it into Pro Tools. Um, so I'm going to record the process, uh, screen record the process, and I'm just going to walk you through um, what has worked for me. Um, so before you start, I want to make sure you have uh, the latest... Uh, version of DaVinci Resolve. Right now it's 16. Originally I was editing in 15.3. Uh, so, um, you know, I patched it and I was a little bit hesitant to, to upgrade to 16, um, but I have to report after backing up the project. I did upgrade to 16 and um, it's worked. Um, actually, it made everything work really well. Uh, a lot of the bugs went away or already, but also there's a whole bunch of settings that you have to um, figure out and make sure they're right um, so you can uh, get a proper AAF. Actually, if you don't do some of these things, then it'll just crash on you and um, you'll be left trying to figure out what I was trying to figure out. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do the screen recording right now. Um, okay, just quickly, um, this video is recorded on the iPhone Max Pro. Normally I record on the Canon EOS R and record on Sennheiser mic, but I'm testing the microphone here and, uh, you know, putting it all in one in this, in this video. So I uh, hope you'll enjoy. So I'm in a dual screen setup um, and I'm only going to show you um, the primary display and, and um, screen record. So new screen recording here and I'm going to start recording. Okay. Um, so this is my full timeline. This is how it looked uh, originally. And I want to point out that um, I've done a um, Academy Leader and 2Pop for them. Uh, that's pretty much a standard in um, audio editing. And it's eight seconds long. And you want the 2Pop to happen at six seconds. Um, that's uh, for their syncing. Now, um, I want you to look at um, these bits here because what I've done was instead of just deleting uh, audio tracks and um, you know certain video files I want to work with I usually want to try to keep them I uh, I just disable them and um, that uh, that can cause issues with the audio export export so what I'm gonna do now what I'm gonna what I did was um, well for one it's a very big movie so I've created nine different reels and uh, so um, I'm going to take you to reel two because I think that's a little bit further in and um, what you'll have seen here is I've just pretty much cleaned out all of my disabled tracks here right um, and so audio wise um, there's only what's going to be get exported um, now within the clips you're going to want to um, go to clip attributes. So right click on um, one of them at least and uh, go to the name. Now what I did was um, I synced camera audio with uh, onset recording. Um, so I used the sync function. Actually, I found it really convenient to do it that way in DaVinci Resolve, uh, much better than Premiere Pro. And that was another advantage that I felt was uh, really good, but I didn't know how to um, make sure that I'm retaining the source name. So here you want to make sure you um, go to the name section and use the embedded source clip metadata so that it's uh, it transfers over in the export. Then in the audio, 
um, you just want to double check that you know you're outputting the right labeled uh, source channels and um, you know Ben and Jed tend to like stereo tracks so um, you know I've done stereo tracks now um, you could try to do a grand um, you know uh, just just go to the clip attributes and and do something like this um, they again they prefer stereo um, you know some you can change these to like 5.1 and all that so um, you know you want to make sure you're you're getting everything and you know um, with your sound editor um, they're gonna have certain preferences on that and um, you know you'll you may have to play around um, to get the right settings that you want for that but the clip attributes are very important to um, to make sure that those are right um, what I did was I went through different sections and you know checked it clip check the clip attributes and um, so you know to each their own if you have a smaller one um, or you don't have as many layers then um, or you're not as messy as me then uh, you know you can do it in a number of ways um, so um, just want to show you that right and then you go into the so once you're from the editing area of DaVinci Resolve you want to go to the delivery area so um, in it's already got loaded um, you know the second reel so if you're exporting something to Pro Tools um, for your sound editor, then uh, you first thing you want to do is go and find where you want to export it. So I have different folders. I'm not going to choose this one. It's um, you know we have a, a folder which has different reels, and uh, in this case, you know you would choose the A2 reel, right? Now um, I've already exported it before, so you're going to see how some of the files look like, um, right? And then. Um, <clears throat> You know, uh, from there, you know, you're going to choose your uh, video settings. I've just chosen 720p because, you know, um, you know, higher video is going to uh, like 1080p is just going to make the files bigger uh, and slow down the render time. Uh, 70, 720p for audio should be enough, but you can change that. You can do whatever you want. Um, and then here on the frame handles, um, you can choose 240. Now it depends on who you are working with. That might be 480, or that might be even higher. So you got to decide um, what's you know best for you in terms of the frame handles. And those are the ends of the things, um, the ends of each um, uh, file. Uh, of course, if you're watching this, you're probably pretty advanced in uh, video editing, and you know what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, and then um, go back here to audio. I've set the bit depth to 24, I think default is 16. Um, you can go as high as 32. And then in the um, file area, I've unchecked this use unique file names. Again, um, you know, you might have your own way of doing things and you may want to check this and try it out, but I've not uh, included the use unique file names. Um, and hopefully all that metadata and uh, the source name will, will pass through, right? Okay. And then uh, once you're done with that, you're gonna click on Add to Render Queue, and uh, you know you can just kick off the Start Render. Um, now, uh, you know I will tell you that you may want to uh, you know offload like a guide track as well um, separately from from this export, and you can easily do that like um, using one of these like Vimeo exports if you want to do a higher resolution. You can do a higher resolution. But you can just output that um, so they so that the sound editor can take a look at the um, video and, and re refer back to what you you know had recorded and what you had edited um, and match it up. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So um, if you like this video, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel, especially if this has helped you. Um, you know, hope you'll you know check out Agent One, and then uh, right now we're working Agent Two. So some of the, uh, this is what I'm, I'm basically working, and if you want to check that out, that's great. I hope you'll like and subscribe, and um, you know I'll see you next time. There's a lot of great content on the way.